Welcome back to the Jungle Histology online training series. My name is Ken Longenecker and this is the fourth of nine modules designed to teach the methods my colleagues and I use to perform rapid reproductive analysis on coral reef fishes. Module 3 focused on whole specimen processing such that you would be filling out the first five columns of this data sheet. Today I'm going to show you how to use the data in these two columns to describe the relationship between the length and the weight of your species. Now this really isn't reproductive analysis, so why are we going to bother with these length-weight relationships? It's because these length-weight relationships can be used to convert length into biomass, to determine fish condition, you can compare growth among areas, and all of these things really form a nice complement to species-specific reproductive analysis. In other words, this information is an important part of fisheries biology and it's very useful for fisheries management. The methods I'm going to present today are based on the recommendations of Frozy and his colleagues in this 2011 publication. I should tell you right now that we're going to be doing some statistics in today's module. And if you know anything about statistics, you know that there are some assumptions that must be satisfied for the results of any statistical test to be valid. Now a detailed introduction to statistics and their assumptions is beyond the scope of this module. So all I'm going to be doing today is showing you the mechanics of performing these statistical tests. And here I've used the graphics program to plot length on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis. The way we'll describe this relationship between length and weight is to raise length to some power b and multiply that by some constant a. The value of a is always positive and is typically very close to zero and the value of the exponent b is typically very close to 3. We're going to find that constant a and the exponent b by finding the logarithm of length and weight data and then performing linear regression analysis on those logarithmically transformed data. The results of that linear regression analysis will give us the equation for a line that will have this form and it turns out that the intercept or the y sub 0 value for that line equals the logarithm of that a constant that we're looking for. Here's the mathematical representation of what I just said. y sub 0 equals the logarithm of a. So we just have to rearrange that equation to solve for a. And doing that we get 10 raised to the power of the value for the intercept or y sub 0 gives us that constant a. Finding the value for b is a little bit more straightforward. It turns out that b, or the slope of the line that we got from linear regression analysis, is equal to that exponent b we're looking for in the length-weight relationship. If you're used to using statistical programs or graphics packages, you might be thinking, why do we go through this whole complicated process? I could have just done some nonlinear regression analysis and came out with the results right away. It turns out that there are several advantages to log transforming your data and using the linear regression approach. The first is that you don't need a specialized statistical program to do the analysis. For instance, if you use Excel, you just have to load the data analysis tool pack and you can do all the procedures that I'm going to be outlining today. Second is that this method helps with easy identification of outliers or pinpointing data points that may be bad. And third is that these log transforms data are already in a format that can be used in analysis of covariance to compare length weight relationships. For instance, to determine whether there's a difference between male and female growth. Now let's go back to our length weight data and go through this process step by step. This concludes module four. I'd like to close by thanking our funders